Okay, hello, how are we doing? What are shape keys? I don't know, let's have a look. Alright, so, uh, we've got our generic white male student there, sorry about that. And um, we're going to have a look at what shape keys are. And we've got some answers here, um, sort of. Um, what are shape keys? We've heard this. We've heard this term mentioned in class. I've mentioned it a few times, and um, there are tutorials online. Um, most of them do seem to be fairly complicated. I just wanted to try and simplify it slightly. Um, why am I rubbing out that? Um, so, let's have a think about very quickly. Very quickly, what shape keys are. So, essentially, modifications of a mesh, so um, that, that you can actually animate. So, taking a mesh, taking a standard um, cube or a plane, let's talk about a plane, and modifying a vert on that plane um, <clears throat> so that it does something like that, perhaps. So let's let's modify that. Um, hang on a second. So we've got that vert there, and then let's maybe... So we've moved this vert to here. It's a modification of a mesh that we can animate. So we take a plane and then we move its um, vert in this corner and we get an animation of the frames in between. Um, we can also mix um, shape keys together as well. So they're often used for facial expressions. You can imagine if we can animate the uh, movement of ver verts around, if you've got um, points on this smile here, we can we can move that vert up here and create a, a bigger smile, or we can take it down and create a frown, <coughs> which would be more likely in my case. Uh, what are you joking? Whatever. But they're used a lot for facial expressions. It is, uh, you can imagine dealing with um, a face, a, you know, even a low poly face, it's going to be quite tricky to move um, uh, verts around to create these facial expressions. So we're going to keep it very simple and, and just look at the, the simple application of shape keys to create our bouncing ball animation. Or we're going to do a bouncing cube in our case. Um, anyway, the idea is that we start with our... Oh, I've missed a word out there. How's that happen? We start with a basis. We start with our base mesh and then we create variations. This is our variation and we store that variation in a shape key. And then we combine the um, modification of that mesh here with regular keyframes, so a regular location keyframe in our case today as we're going to do that bouncing ball business. Um, we can combine what we've done here with our location keyframes to create slightly more interesting animation. All right, so let's get going with that. Um, where is Blender? Here we are. Um, so here's a quick example there's our best what we're going to try and rattle through as quickly as we can just it's a very simple bouncing cube you can see a very quick squash stretch squash again so it's a one second animation we're aiming for okay let's just quickly turn on screencast keys um, and then let's have a look at adding shape keys to this this cube i am going to just very quickly move it up one blender unit onto the surface of this grid and add a ground plane. Makes sense. Okay, so we're going to select our cube <clears throat> and then we're going to go to the object data tab. So this tab up here, the little triangular one, triangular one here, um, this is where our shape keys are created and we do that by adding our uh, shape key. We do that by using this plus key, this plus button. The first time we do that, it adds that basis that I mentioned. Um, we're going to pretty much ignore this. It's it's just a, a base keyframe that will store the original mesh. We're going to add another one, and this is where the action is going to happen. Um, you can see this one here has no uh, there's no settings, no values to this one. It's purely a, a, a it's purely storing it's a, the original um, uh, locations of all the verts um, in this in this key shape key here. So we add a new one. I'm going to call it. We're going to give it a name, squash, and then you can see we have values um, from 0 to 1. And changing those values does nothing because we haven't edited our mesh yet. Um, there are some more settings down here that I'm not going to go into at the moment. So to change the, the, um, the mesh, to create this variation, 
um, we need to go into edit mode. So we've got our new shape key selected here, and then we're going to go into edit mode. And we're going to modify our mesh. So I'm going to do that by just squashing this one down. Uh, and then very quickly, I'll just scale it out slightly. So if we were to squash that cube down, that mass has got to go somewhere. It would spread out a little bit. Um, and then when we go back to object mode, um, it's back to our original shape. And that's because by default the value is set at zero. Um, and to see the action, we need to turn that value up. So I'm just left clicking on the value slider here and taking that up to one. So it's essentially zero, zero percent, and then a hundred percent of that modification. So zero to one. Okay. Um, so let's very quickly add a new shape key and let's call it stretch. <clears throat> and then edit mode, let's grab that face at the top and just drag it up. And then back to object mode and then same deal, goes back to that base mesh until we edit, alter the value. Okay, now how do we actually employ this? How do we actually use this in our animation? Um, and we're going to do that, as I said, with a little combination of shape keys and location keyframes to bounce this cube into the air. Um, so, first of all, let's just very quickly animate the location frame uh, um, I think that's frame one. Um, now, I'm actually going to undo that um, and I'm going to change my start frame to frame zero. It just makes sense. I want to start and I want to be in frame zero. And then um, we are going to go into the dope sheet. So we've got a bit more control over these keyframes in the dope sheet. And now I'm going to hit I and keyframe that location on the ground at frame zero. I am going to zoom in significantly um, because this is going to be a one second animation so we need to be right in close on this. Okay so it's going to take one second to get from the top uh, from the bottom to the top and back down again so about frame 12 we're going to send it up to the sky. So we'll move it up and hit I on location <clears throat> and then we're going to bring it back down again and to do that something I should have shown you in the dope sheet um, video um, the um, duplication of a keyframe. So I'm going to take that initial keyframe, I'm going to duplicate it because we want it to be in exactly the same position um, in frame 24. So I'm going to zoom in a bit further and grab it and move it to frame 24. That's more like it. Alright, now trouble is um, we need a little bit of time here for our squash. Is at the moment it's just it's in frame zero. It's there, and then it just immediately starts taking off. So I'm going to duplicate this just a couple of frames over to frame four. So it's going to sit for four frames, and then it's going to shoot off. And then the same thing. I need to do. I need to do the same thing at the other end. So that's frame 20, frame 24, let's take shift D and bring that to frame 20. So it's now going to land a little bit sooner and pause to give us time to do that squash as it hits the ground. All right, so we've got our quick bounce. Right, I need to change the end frame to frame um, 25 so for purposes of previewing this, that it'll loop around. Okay, so that's our locations. Um, rattled in there. How do we combine this with the shape keys they made, that we made a minute ago? Well, we do that in the shape key editor. So that within the dope sheet, there are various different modes. We might look at the action editor, um, but we're going to use. We need to use the shape key editing mode of the dope sheet. So we we'll click on that, and there are our keys that we added earlier um, as channels in our dope sheet. There's the squash and there's the stretch. Now the trouble with this business is that we are we've not been left with very much to um, we've not been given very much information on what's happening because we've lost our location keyframes. So I'm going to just very quickly go back to the dope sheet and just add some markers. So we used markers before um, for um, 
com uh, binding the marker with the with cameras. Um, I can't talk and do things at the same time, so just M, Control M to name it. So this is going to be takeoff, and and then this is going to be um, top apex. It's probably the technical term. This is going to be our land. So just Control M to name that marker landed, <clears throat> and then we're going to just call this one end point or something and okay so these markers yeah we've used them before for binding the cameras to a particular point in the timeline so when it gets to a particular point in the timeline it switches camera but they're very useful for synchronizing and working between different um, timelines or different um, keyframe editors so back to the shape key editor now we now we know what we're what we're doing so at the start point so this is where we're going to keyframe the values of our squash and stretch. So at the very beginning, at the start point, we want it to be at zero. So we need to add a keyframe. So usual way, right click, insert a keyframe. This is where it starts to change slightly because when we move the playhead and change the value, it will give us an auto, it will automatically give us a keyframe. So we've got four seconds until it takes off. So we need to squash it. It's going to be very, very fast. So. At frame two, halfway between the start and the takeoff point, we're turning the value up to one, and that's automatically added a keyframe there. You can see it happening, and then at takeoff point, back to zero, automatic keyframe. Okay, so it squashes, and then it's going to shoot up into the sky. So at the top, this is where we need to think about um, introducing our stretch. Um, but we've gone a little bit too far because we need a start point for this, a start point for the stretch, and then the end point is going to be here at the top. So we need to then keyframe the start point of our stretch. So right click, insert keyframe at the takeoff, and then um, at the top, turn it up to 100%, turn it up to uh, 1, we get our automatic keyframe, and then we're going to land. Um, and turn it down to zero. So it's going to squash down, it's going to prepare itself for launch and then shoot off up in the air, stretching as it goes, and a little stretch on the way back down. And then here we have um, time here to have another little squash as it compresses on landing. So start point, end point of the transition. So it's going to start here. So we need to add um, a keyframe at this point at zero. And then um, this orange line, by the way, in case we were wondering between these two keyframes, just indicates that it has exactly the same value. So it's at zero here, the squash, and it's at zero here. But we want to start our transition from zero to one at this point, so we need another keyframe here. So zero, two, fr two frames in, one, two, turn our squash back up to one. Two more frames to our end point and return to our original um, value and pushing and stretching as it goes. And that is not bad, that is pretty much it. It's us combined our shape keys with the shape key editor um, with our regular location keyframes. You can see switching back to the dope sheet now, um, we can see it all in one place. I've got my keys as a channel in the in the dope sheet so that's great um, let's have another little quick look now you'll see it looks like it's kind of stuttering slightly I mean this is not important I'm gonna just go into the display options and just tick only render so it's looking like a little stutter and that's because it is stuttering it's doing it twice it's squashing here at the end and then squashing at the beginning which is immediately after the end so I'm just gonna give it a um, a couple of frames to kind of rest, turn the end point up to frame 30, so it now has a bit of a rest before it jumps up again. It's not amazing, but it kind of does the job. I maybe want to stretch out that transition at the end here for slightly more interesting. Um, let's have a look. I just want to take the squash, that last squash frame so it takes slightly longer at the end let's have a look at that that's a little bit more like it 
eases back into its original position again. Okay, so that is that's the idea. Very very simple. Um, it's just a case of having a, a play around with that. Is there anything else I needed to talk about? Um, I'll very quickly show you um, uh, it happening here on the the cube that I used for my um, grapple activity. So you can see at this point, cube is the cube, and then straight away it leans forward and then as it gets towards the end it lean, leans back as well so if i'll just go into local view on that and show you very quickly um the uh <coughs> shape key so i've just got a forward and a back so the forward value is just me grabbing these two edges and moving them forward on the y-axis to lean forward and then the back leaning back slightly as it as it breaks Okay, I could very quickly show you that in action. It's not very exciting. Um, yeah, why not? You've seen it before. There you go. So it shoots forward and then breaks as it gets to the end. So combining the shape keys with the location keyframes. Very simple. Okay, I hope that was helpful. All the best with that.